We're at Siskiyou Field Institute. I'm John Letts, and today we're going to find out about some of the critical work that this organization does, both in the science community and in education. We'll hear from outdoor educators Mandy Noel and Kathy Pyle, but first I asked Executive Director Robin Hartman for the basics. What is Siskiyou Field Institute, and what is its mission? Well, the Siskiyou Field Institute is um, an educational organization that's been around for 18 years. And our mission is to get people connected with the, the Siskiyou, Klamath Siskiyou bioregion and to uh, provide education, to do research about the bioregion, and to reach out to the public and um, interact with the public and bring them closer to their surroundings. I asked Mandy Noel about the educational part of that mission, their outreach to area school children. At the Siskiyou Field Institute, we have a variety of youth education programs. Many of them we offer to local schools and even schools a little out of the area, such as a Wairika, California. We've actually had a high school from there participate in our programs. And those school programs, we um, align everything we teach here to standards that teachers are trying to hit in the classroom. So those include the Common Core National Standards in English and Math, and the Next Generation Science Standards that just came out last year that teachers are moving away from the Oregon State Science Standards and trying to um, hit all these standards that kids around the nation are all learning right now so it's going to get us uh, on par with everyone across the country so we try to create programs here that teach those science concepts that teachers are teaching in the classroom and bring them to an outdoor setting where it's authentic for kids they can um, not only learn about why it's important to have clean water in our world, but then go out to a, a local stream and measure that water quality and figure out what that concept actually means to have clean water and uh, look at creatures in the creek um, for, with their, you know, at first hand. They're right there in front of them and f have all of those uh, also tactile feelings that they would get in an outdoor setting as well that they might not get in a classroom so it's it's very um, empowering to provide kids with that experience and I'm so glad that I have the opportunity to do that every day here in addition to our programs that we offer for schools we also have summer camps for our local youth and sometimes we get um, kids that find out about our programs that live in like Portland for instance or the Bay Area and they'll come up here and get to experience the beautiful Klamath Siskiyou eco region that we're teaching the public about and they go home and spread the word in their communities and then more people find out about us that way um, so we have a, a really fun time with our summer programs. We have a kids camp that's elementary school school kids. It's called the Nature Discovery um, Camp, and it's a day camp. And uh, we do a lot of uh, tracking animals, catching critters, um, swimming in their, our creeks, and just learning all about the natural world, getting kids for, um, comfortable in their own backyards. and. Then we also offer a middle school overnight camp, which is a week-long program where a lot of local students participate in that. We had 25 students participating in, in that camp this year, and uh, 16 of them were from two of our partner schools, the Lincoln Savage Middle School and the Fleming Middle School, which are both in the Three Rivers District. And we have a partnership with them uh, where we they provide us with a 21st century grant to provide after school and summer programs for those students. Um, so that was nice to have such a high participation participation from those two schools. And we also uh, at the same time while our summer camps are going on, we offer backpacking trips for high school students in the Calmeopsis Wilderness, which is you can access if you just pass our office here at the Siskiyou Field Institute and continue down Illinois River Road. Uh, eventually it gets kind of rough and rugged out there, but it's a beautiful place to explore. We also are doing a new trip this 
that's happening right now in the Marble Mountains, which is right still within the Klamath Eco Region, just in Northern California. And we're taking a group of uh, Ashland High School students and Illinois Valley High School students out there right now. Along with youth education, Siskiyou Field Institute reaches out to adults. Program coordinator Kathy Pyle gives us an overview. We usually um, operate about 35 classes a year, and our season spans uh, early spring from mid-March until late November with some of our mushroom classes. And we, um, the height of our season is generally late May through July. Uh, a lot of our classes involve uh, looking at plants in full bloom or um, riding the river and studying river ecology. We do that on both the Klamath and the Rogue and we're expanding that uh, program for next year. And so our most of our students, well our students actually range from young professionals who need to improve their skill set for their jobs. A lot of botanists, uh, some entomologists and lichenologists attend our workshops. And we also have general interest classes in natural history, things like butterflies, dragonflies, geology of the area. Um, for just anybody in, in the public sector who's interested in finding out more about their natural surroundings. And then for people who are a little bit more specialized and have us have a particular interest in say botany or geology, we also offer those focused uh, field courses. Executive Director Robin Hartman points out that the location of Siskiyou Field Institute lends itself well to scientific research. We uh, are invested in learning more about the Siskiyou, Siskiyou, uh, Klamath Siskiyou bioregion and um, we have 850 acres here and we're just a natural place to come and learn about the serpentine soils and the environment that is uh, related to the serpentine. Um, we have uh, researchers that have, have set up a research station here and study effects on climate and the, um, the um, flora of the area. Um, and so that is part of our mission is the research uh, for the area. Hartman shares a research project here that could have huge ramifications. Well, we're sitting here out on the porch of uh, the front porch of the Candida um, House uh, at the Siskiyou Field Institute. And I'm looking out on one of our projects, and maybe you'll get a chance to look at that later on today. But um, we have a station set up uh, that's studying the effects of climate change on various uh, native species of plants. And so it's a very intricate station where there are different plots and each plot has a different uh, temperature regime established with it. And so scientists are studying, uh, especially through the colder months, applying a warmer temperature to these micro microsites and uh, to be able to kind of um, envision or predict what might happen here if uh, climate stayed warmer uh, throughout the year. Hartman explains how the science work at Siskiyou Field Institute involves the local community. One thing about our uh, focus on research is we attract some amazing people who are professionals in their own field uh, to teach the adult uh, science classes here. And so a lot of times uh, bringing our educators to this site is a way for them to kind of uh, continue the legacy of the work that they are doing and bring that out to the to the public and to citizens and engage citizens in helping collect more information about specific things. For instance, we have a dragonfly class uh, that meets and um, covers uh, native dragonflies and um, the experts teaches the citizens about dragonflies and in that process more data is then collected about native dragonflies. Same with uh, native bees and um, other uh, native species of our area. To visit the classroom at Siskiyou Field Institute is to feel the excitement of studying nature. This is one locale where youth education coordinator 
Mandy Noel stokes the fires of curiosity and anticipation. Children learn to connect with their natural community. Here we see some of the materials for hands-on learning, and we're reminded that experiences here lead to the Oregon State Science Standards. But most of the learning experiences take place outside these walls. We have a mammals program that's geared more towards third graders. That's about the youngest age that we cater to currently. And in that program, kids go out tracking. We teach them what different animal tracks look like so they can recognize the appearance of those tracks when they're out in the field. Um, they get to look at pelts of animals and identify animals based on their fur um, and their antlers if they're a deer or an elk or their skulls. We have a lot of skulls for kids to touch and examine up close. I also do an owl pellet dissection with kids. So even though that's a bird, not related, we would think to mammals, when you uh, look through that owl pellet, you're gonna find lots of mammal bones like um, from mice and shrews and voles and oftentimes bird bones as well. And basically what an owl pellet is, if no one knows what that is, is when the owl digests its prey, it oftentimes can't, um, it can't digest fully the bones and the fur and the feathers. And so instead of uh, having them come out that end, they come out this end. We have a songbird science and outdoor school program that's currently overnight and kids come out and they get out with a local uh, Audubon Society volunteer and we have binoculars for all the students and they'll walk around our property and identify all the birds at our feeders that we have or just flying around through the trees. Um, we have a great population of acorn woodpeckers here that make our big legacy oak trees into granary trees and stuff them full of acorns. And so kids get to be out looking at the acorn woodpeckers in action with their binoculars, which is really fun. And I use a education kit from the SOU's at Southern Oregon University's Environmental Education Graduate Program. They put together a series of natural science kits that are available to educators. And they have some amazing specimens of birds in those kits and nest as well. So I allow kids to look at those and really get to examine a bird and what it looks like up close and make detailed sketches and things just like a naturalist would do. Um, so that's a great program. And typically with our overnights, we uh, offer our ropes course to teachers and their students as well. So we have a, a low element challenge course, which is off this direction. And it's basically about two feet off the ground and kids have to navigate through that as a team and so they're going along cables and through nets and on little swings and whatnot um, doing the best they can to balance themselves and get encourage everyone to get around those obstacles and there's a few other elements in there too that we use one called a spider web where kids have to do basically a trust fall lift to weave each other through this web for older kids, there's a more challenging course. There's also something new, a wilderness experience in the Marble Mountains. It's actually that trip in the Marble Mountains is an 11 day trip. So they're out there for a significant amount of time. They don't cover a lot of mileage. They pretty much hike somewhere, spend a couple days there exploring. Um, they do a lot of prompting for the kids to journal about the wilderness and just their own self-reliance and also uh, just getting to know one another and the, so they'll spend a few days there and enjoy the scenery and then they'll move on to another place and towards the end of their 11 days they have a 24-hour solo where the guides set them up in different spots in the wilderness where they all can be monitored and the kids set up their own shelter they make their own meals and they spend the entire 24 hours in one place alone which um, 
that's not always the safest thing to do in the wilderness. So for them to have that opportunity and know that someone is there keeping them safe, yet they're still all alone in the wilderness, that's a really powerful experience for them to have. So I'm just honored to give kids that opportunity. Noelle told me about a new partnership with Oregon Caves National Monument. This is in preparation for outdoor school for everyone. So with our partnership with the Oregon Caves, kids will spend the night here in our two yurts that can accommodate up to 30 students and our six gigantitents, which can accommodate up to 48 students. So we can have 78 students here at a time, and we're looking to expand that to accommodate even larger groups and they'll wake up here at the Siskiyou Field Institute and measure the water quality on two of our tributary streams to the Illinois River, Deer Creek and Squaw Creek. And they'll look at the pH of the stream and the water temperature, the air temperature, and they'll also investigate the macro inver invertebrates that are bioindicators of our water quality here at the Siskiyou Field Institute. And they will upload all of their data into a citizen science database called uh, stream webs that's put out by the Oregon State University Extension Services um, office and so we'll log our data into that we'll collect GPS points from where we are um, to get make sure everything is accurate and then it's an authentic experience for kids they can go back into the classroom get online look up the data they collected and compare it to what other students are collecting in the field just like scientists do I asked Mandy Noel how students respond to all this outdoor activity. Pure joy. They get into the creek, they splash around, they find these creatures, they figure out what they are using their observation skills. It develops um, a deep connection in nature for them that is so essential for them to have if we want these kids to grow up caring about our environment and valuing the natural world and continue to set places aside where people can do research and find out more about the effects of climate change that they're going to have to be dealing with. I feel like being out here in the natural world and getting outside of the classroom um, might trigger students to go into different careers. Um, for instance, somebody could say, hey, I want to be that lady. I want to be a teacher outside. I want to be a park ranger. Or I want to be the scientist that's in the water measuring the water quality water quality. I want to be an aquatic ecologist or I want to be that ornithologist studying birds. You know, I hope that this experience that we provide for them at a young age leads them to becoming or to going into some sort of career like that in the future with, where they can spend their time outside protecting the natural world. Executive Director Robin Hartman showed me how Siskiyou Field Institute will be ready for Oregon's full outdoor education approved by voters last year. And next year our outdoor school will be expanding and our goal is to try to eventually offer at Siskiyou Field Institute uh, outdoor school for all fifth graders uh, in our area. And um, so we're partnering with Oregon Caves to do that. We're going to incorporate our watershed program as uh, two nights out of this week-long program, outdoor school is a full week of education, not just a, an overnighter or two nights. It's a big deal. Kids come, uh, they spend a whole week at a residential camp, um, and it's during the school year. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's recognized as a learning opportunity. So we're fortunate to be in a partnership with Oregon Caves, and we'll be, the first two days will be our watershed testing in the cave uh, tour and so we're just excited to have such a great partner uh, that's going to give us a really high quality program for the for these students. Not only will Siskiyou Field Institute be an even greater resource for Oregon kids, there are exciting things happening for adults. Kathy Pyle explains. The Klamath River Natural History from a Raft is a class that we started working on a couple of years ago. We were able to find a wonderful instructor in Joshua Strange, who graduated, uh, did his dissertation through Humboldt State University, but he has had many, many years of experience um, 
working, uh, he's a fish fisheries biologist. And um, so he's able to tell the story of the salmon in the Klamath and give an overall view of the natural history of the Klamath River, which is very unusual because of its origins. It starts out in flat farmland in the Klamath Basin and then becomes wilder and stronger as it runs on. And there is something very um, special about the, uh, the mouth of the Klamath. Um, there's a lot of, uh, it has to do with physics and um, geology and marine biology, but it's um, a very uh, prolific feeding ground for marine mammals and uh, a special place for the salmon. Um, and he also gives the perspective of the three native tribes that are involved in um, salmon fishing and um, both symbolically and uh, for to sustain their tribe through the season. And he, he gives a really good uh, portrait of how the Native Americans have tended the salmon and different ecological practices they've done to make improve the salmon habitat. And uh, it's also a wonderful trip in the spring. Um, the wildflowers are out on the slopes. We hear a little bit about the geology and the flood history of the Klamath. And we were able to see quite a few birds. Um, golden eagle nesting, um, bald eagles, osprey. I was amazed at how much Siskiyou Field Institute has going on. There are so many opportunities for adult education. We, um, our adult education classes are based here, quite a few of them are based here at our headquarters in Selma. And it's a beautiful natural environment and it, it provides a lot of uh, learning opportunities. Um, for instance, uh, we just did a, an aquatic invertebrates class last weekend and that's kind of a fancy name for all the animals that live in our creeks that are visible to the eye. And by that I mean crayfish, uh, the nymphs of uh, dra damselflies and dragonflies, the larval forms of different uh, flies like hoverflies, um, and uh, we explored our own creek. It was a wonderful day of wading in the creek and netting, seeing what we found turned up in our nets. Caddisflies were another fascinating thing. Those are the, the flies that when they're larvae, they carry their houses on their backs and they construct them from pebbles, gravel in the creek. So we saw some of those. But anyway, so we waded through the creek and these are grown ups really getting in touch with their childhood uh, memories of be playing in the creek and we explored the creek and then at two points and then we also went across the bridge to our fen we have a serpentine fen on site with darlingtonia which are the carnivorous plants that are uh, endemic to serpentine areas and I was able to see that the gentians are starting to bloom, those beautiful blue flowers. And we actually have some rare plants that are being monitored on the, in our serpentine fen. The Oregon Department of Agriculture botanists visit us a couple times a year and uh, monitor how those are doing. But uh, the other point I wanted to make is that our classes really take place all over our bioregion, which extends all the way down to the Southern Klamath Mountains um, just north of Redding, California. We go to lava beds. We usually have two classes a year at Lava Beds National Monument. We're in the Redwoods um, and uh, Mount Ashland. Uh, we went to Mount Eddy this year with a botany class. We had a wonderful time up on Mount Eddy. Um, so all over. On Adventures in Education, we focus on positive things happening in education. Siskiyou Field Institute is a good fit for that mission. I just think uh, one of our strong points here at Siskiyou Field Institute is our dedication to lifelong learning. And so we start here with little kids and we, we offer learning and connection with our surroundings and with the environment. There's no end to the, into the upper age limit. So it's exciting to offer that opportunity in a community where we're surrounded by the, uh, the beauty of the Klamath-Siskiyou region, but we don't have a lot of ways for people to just get in touch with how the system works, what are the pieces of the, the components of the system, you know, to stop and observe. And like Kathy said, 
watching adults get in a creek and play like kids and have that natural sense of wonder all over again. You know, this is what we're, what we're about here and what we're hoping, that's the kind of experience we want people to have when they get here, is that sense of wonder and connection with the environment. So people go home and, and think, Th these are my surroundings, this is my place, this is my Oregon, and I want to be responsible for this and I want to learn more and I want to connect more. Hartman reminds our viewers that all this is yours, no matter what income level you have. Our, not only are we offer uh, learning for a range of uh, over a person's lifetime, but we also offer it for what, regardless of what your income level is here. So we have many ways, especially for our younger students, to um, reach out to families that are low income, um, that are struggling to make ends meet. We want to make sure that uh, outdoor education and natural education is not the bottom priority. We, we have scholarships through the schools, and we also have adult scholarships. Um, and so people should not be shy about wanting to learn. Uh, they just need to reach out to us and check out our classes offered online and reach out and say, hey, I could use a little help with, it, with this, the cost of this course. Hartman recommends a visit to their website if you want to be a part of Siskiyou Field Institute's work. Well, a simple way is just to visit our website online, and it, that's the, T-H-E, S-F-I, the, the S-F-I dot org, and it's easy to make a donation there on our secure website. Um, you can simply uh, come out and visit us sometime and show an interest in our organization and, and become a volunteer or become engaged in our work here in many different ways. You can take charge of your own nature study here or just spend some time in nature. We are not only a place to come and learn, but you can come and stay here and learn. We've got a beautiful lodge here. We've got overnight accommodations that are at a reasonable cost. And so uh, a family could come here and do their own botanizing. They can do their own exploration of the creeks and uh, stay in one of our beautiful rooms and use our kitchen. It's like a, like a hostel. Uh, where uh, you bring your own food, you cook your own dinner. Uh, and so we hope, for the future, we hope to expand that. We hope people will think of it as us as not only classes, but a place to go and do their own, use it as a home base for your own family exploration or your group of friends. Uh, you know, get, get a group of friends together, come and stay at the Siskiyou Field Institute. Enjoy each other's company in the, in the winter months around our, our, our fireplace in our great room. Uh, and then in the daytime, go out and explore and hike the mountains and, and explore the streams and go up to Oregon Caves. But do your, think of SFI, Siskiyou Field Institute, as your home base for your own exploration. There's so much here at Siskiyou Field Institute at historic Deer Creek Ranch. And yes, John Wayne slept here. You're watching Adventures in Education. You can watch an archive of today's show and others by going to this web page and following the link to archives. Watch RVTV on channel 15 or 182 or visit our website for the next Adventures in Education. I'm John Letts.